for years people have been saying that I should write a book, people who would hear the stories. Um, and I resisted it because I think all of us take our lives for granted. You know, it's just not really that interesting. Do I really have enough stuff to fill a book? And it's been going out, speaking to high school students and college students, and afterwards everyone coming up and saying, what was it like to be a Panther that made me um, decide to write something that young people could, um, uh, could read and relate to? It also made me remember books that inspired me. Um, Man Child in the Promised Land, uh, Down These Mean Streets by Perry Thomas, the autobiography of Malcolm X. They were so alive because they were written in the voice of those characters, those people, as they were growing up and as they were meeting those challenges. I joined the Panthers when I was 15 years old. Uh, a few weeks after I turned 16, I went to prison. I was arrested in the Panther 21 case. Bail was set at $100,000. Spent a tough year in prison. Um, growing up surviving, still trying to organize. Came out on bail and got more involved in the movement. I was now one of the younger spokesperson, helping to run both the Harlem office and the Bronx office. Panther Baby is really written for young people. I wrote it with the voice of that young black man who was seeking the path to manhood uh, just as much as he was seeking uh, to make sense of the world and to make sense of his place in the movement for social change. If you ask any former Panther, what were you taught to believe in above all else, above the rhetoric and the 10-point program, Panthers will answer in this fashion, to love the people and to serve the people. And this is what I hope comes through. This is, the, this is the lesson that I learned in writing the book, that that's what it's all about. My work with young people comes out of a couple of things. Having never known my father and have, and then being in the Panther Party and having a mentor who I looked up to and who I loved and admired and wanted to be just like turned out to be an undercover cop. And so I was devastated and confused and broken. It took a lot of years to really make sense of all that and to heal. And I wanted to be there as a man and as a role model for young people, for young people who may have been disappointed, who were uh, uh, you know, who didn't have the best of role models, the best of circumstances, or maybe even did, but we're looking for some answers outside of the home. We wanted to create a safe space where that can happen. So that's why this, my service through working with young people is so important. I think it represents an extension of my, not only my own experiences, but my own healing. I started teaching first as an adjunct, and then I was walking across campus, and, um, and I swear this is a true story, even though people think <laughs> that I'm making it up, and as I'm walking, um, uh, I hear someone go, psst, and I look up, and it's the statue of alma mater. And she looked at me, and she said, oh, it's Professor Joseph now, is it? I remember when you wanted to burn the damn place down. Uh, and, and I think the lesson there is that um, anything in life is possible. And I think that the energy, I think the other lesson is when you look at people who were movement folks, uh, who were in the Panthers, who did survive. We were the curious minds and the bright minds of our generation. We were attracted to the movement because we were curious about what was going on in the world and we thought the world could work better. So that we continue to have a life of the mind and a life of, of, uh, of challenge, of trying to challenge society and to challenge ourselves and challenge our students or our patients or our constituents or wherever we wound up at, makes perfect sense.